Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Frangipan Tart. That's right, halfway between Cake Town and Pieville, there's a little spot called Frangipan Junction that unfortunately not many people are familiar with. And sure, a lot of that's because it's a fictional place I just made up for this intro. But the point is, more people should know about this gorgeous and very easy to make pastry that I sort of consider a hybrid between those two more popular desserts. And by the way, one of the all-time great ways to eat fresh, sweet summer fruit. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by making our pastry shell, which is usually done with pie dough. But since I have three rectangular pieces of puff pastry in the freezer, I decided to use those. And my plan was to piece those together into sort of a freeform tart. So I used a little touch of water to help the dough stick. And I put two of my pieces of dough end to end to form one of those long rectangular tarts you see in those fancy French bakeries. And I sort of pressed and pushed those together and then used my bench scraper to square those off. And something I always want you to remember when we're working on desserts and pastries, they don't have to look good until the end. So please don't be too stressed forming this shell, especially if you're piecing together some scraps like I am. Because as you'll see, once this is baked and glazed, it is gonna look amazing. But anyway, once I had my foundation built, I went around with my finger moistening the edge of that rectangle. And what I'll do is cut strips from that third piece and use that to build a crust around the outside. Around the outside, around the outside. And as always, when we're working with puff pastry, we want to make sure it's very cold, since it's going to be a lot easier to cut, and will actually look better once it's baked. And since my third piece of puff pastry wasn't big enough, I ended up having to piece together three strips on each side, which I was afraid was going to cause some problems, but ultimately it didn't. And then what we'll do once our pastry base has been bordered, is take a fork and do what's known as docking the dough which just means we're gonna poke that bottom like a hundred times. And the reason the pastry chefs call this docking is because I think people were not comfortable calling it pricking, which is what I always called it until I learned the right word. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and dock that dough all over, just on the bottom, at which point this is pretty much ready to pre-bake in the oven. Although I did notice one of these seams looked kind of smushed, so I sliced in to make it look like the other seams. I mean, come on, I do want all my imperfections to look the same. And then what we'll do once that's set is pop it into the center of a 400 degree oven for 15 minutes or until it's starting to turn golden brown and looks a little something like this. I know it looks kind of funny, but don't worry. Because what we're going to do as soon as that comes out is sort of readjust our border since it's nice and hot and flexible. But more importantly, we want to push down the bottom with the back of a fork. All right, press it down nice and firmly because we want a nice crispy bottom crust. And by pushing down the bottom, Thanks to that extra dough we put around the outside, we've created a space with the perfect depth into which we will transfer our almond paste. Speaking of which, I was kind of worried some of that might leak out between those cracks in my seams and the border. So since I did have a couple scraps of dough left, I decided to add a little bit to those areas. In hindsight, probably was unnecessary. But I did it anyway, because of that whole better safe than sorry thing. And that's going to be it for the first step of this process. All we have to do now is let that pastry shell cool completely before we add our filling. Which, by the way, is the next step. And that's going to start with some room temperature butter, to which we will add a little touch of white sugar. And we'll take a spatula and smear those two things together. And when you first start, it's going to seem like you have way too much sugar compared to butter. And you'll think something's wrong. But don't think like that. Always stay positive. And you'll see, just after about a half minute, it will all start to smear together. And before you know it, your mixture will look like this. And then what we'll do once our sugar and butter is creamed together is add one whole egg, which technically we're supposed to beat first, but I don't because what we can do is take our whisk and just sort of beat the egg on the side like this. And then we'll slowly sort of incorporate the rest of the mixture in the bowl. And then once that comes together, we'll finish up with a vigorous whisk until we have sort of a light creamy mixture that hopefully looks something like this. And then once that's set, we can go ahead and add our ground almonds, also known as almond flour. And for me, the finer those almonds are ground, the better. And then besides our almonds, we'll also want a nice big pinch of salt, as well as a few drops of real pure vanilla extract, as well as some almond extract, if you have it. That is optional, but I really do think it improves the flavor. And believe it or not, that's going to be it for this very, very simple filling. All we have to do is take a spatula and mix this thoroughly. And then assuming our pastry shell is cooled completely, the only thing we have left to do is to slice up some beautiful fresh fruit. And today I'm going to be using what's called a pluot, which is a cross between a plum and an apricot. Hence the weird name. 
And I guess it depends on the size of your fruit, but I'm going to cut these into about six wedges each. And while I think this is a very beautiful and delicious choice, I think any other stone fruit would work beautifully. Whoops. And above and beyond stone fruit, I think any and all berries would also be lovely here. So we'll go ahead and slice up some fruit, dealer's choice. At which point we can begin final assembly by transferring our almond paste into our pastry shell. And once that's been scraped in, we'll take a little spatula and try to even that out as best we can. And then once that's set, we'll go ahead and place in our fruit, being sure to leave a little bit of space in between each piece. And by the way, we don't want to press our fruit in too deep. Right, just like an eighth of an inch is fine. And if at all possible, try to have the cut side of the fruit facing up versus the skin side, since that will look nicer once it's baked. And that's it. Once our frangipan has been fruited, it is now officially ready to bake. Although let me rotate this around first, so you can see that absolutely glorious color. But anyway, let's go ahead and transfer that into the center of a 375 degree oven for about 40 minutes or so, or until everything's nicely browned, and we can see our almond paste is baked up around our fruit forming the most beautiful indentations in all the pastry world. I mean, there really isn't anything else that looks quite like this. And then of course it's time for me to deliver the usual bad news, that we have to let this cool completely before we serve it. So we'll go ahead and transfer that onto a rack, so it can cool all the way down without the bottom getting soggy. And then before we eat this, there is one more optional step, if you want, and that would be to brush on a glaze. And I'll describe this in more detail in the blog post, but all this is is some apricot jam, that I heated up with a small splash of water. And what we'll do is brush that over the top, which is gonna add a very attractive shine to the surface. And it's this very simple extra little step that gives pastries that professional finish look. So you're gonna have to decide whether to glaze yours or not. I mean, you are after all the Rand McNally of your frangy pants finale. But for me, the few minutes it takes to give it that shiny glaze makes this look way, way more professional. So I went ahead and glazed mine and waiting for it to cool completely, which was super hard, because look at this. But eventually it did, after what seemed like four hours, reach room temperature. So I went ahead and sliced in so we could take a look. And what you see here is what I consider the perfect ratio of sweet, juicy fruit to moist almond cake to buttery, crispy pastry. So for me, that looks just about perfect. And I went ahead and plated up a portion and finished it with a little bit of creme fraiche and a touch of freshly grated lime zest. And that's it. My fresh summer fruit frangipan tart is ready to enjoy. And not only is the flavor combination perfect here, between our sweet tart fruit and that semi-sweet nutty almond cake and our buttery pastry, but this is texturally thrilling as well, since we have a beautiful combination of soft and juicy and crisp and flaky, which is why I think for showing off fresh summer fruit, it doesn't get much better than this. And I know a lot of you would go with vanilla ice cream instead of the creme fraiche, which is totally fine. But remember, this is kind of sweet, and so is ice cream. So personally, I do prefer the tangier creme fraiche to sort of balance everything out here. But regardless of how you garnish, I really do hope you give this delicious tart a try soon. So head over to fooddishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.